FDA has ruled that hearing aids can now be sold over the counter without a prescription, making them easier and cheaper for people to get. That's amazing. Yeah. And you know, it's crazy. It's crazy that you ever needed a prescription for a hearing aid. Why? It's not like you can abuse them. It's not like they're drug dealers in the street going, yo, yo, you want some of that extra loud? Yo, yo. <laughs> Meanwhile, in travel news, American Airlines has announced that they will be buying 20 supersonic jets that'll be able to get passengers to their destination twice as fast as current airplanes. Yeah. And while that's great, it also means the annoying guy who's sitting next to you on the plane is gonna have to talk twice as fast now. It's gonna be like, <laughs> so yeah, you fly often, you're going on vacation, is it the work thing? I just had to check a bag. You checking a bag? Where are you from? Yeah, first time you flee? Yeah, the plane's seen the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's gonna be great. And we're here. <laughs> So, in, I'm gonna call it culinary news, <laughs> Papa John's has unveiled <laughs> a new menu item called Papa Bowls, which are bowls full of pizza toppings without the crust. <laughs> and I just wanna say, congratulations, America, you did it. You finally found the opposite of a salad. Well done. <laughs> congratulations. But let's move on to some of the biggest stories of the day, starting with the 2022 midterms. Last night, the primary that everyone was watching was in Wyoming, the state with a population almost as big as a New York subway car. Now, <laughs> the reason everyone was watching this race is because Liz Cheney was running for re-election. And of course, Liz Cheney has been the most prominent anti-Trump Republican in Congress. She voted to impeach him. She's led the committee investigating him. Basically, she just will not stop talking about that one time he tried to overthrow the American democracy. That was like, <laughs> like a million years ago, lady, move on. So anyway, <laughs> last night's primary was the chance for Wyoming Republicans to declare whether they stood with Liz Cheney or with Donald Trump. And they answered bigly. Overnight out of Wyoming, a clear message from that state about the direction of the Republican Party. Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who was reelected easily less than two years ago, lost badly last night in her primary fight against her Trump backed challenger, Harriet Hageman. Cheney's landslide loss was no surprise. She knew she'd pay a price for voting to impeach Donald Trump and then serving as the vice chair of the January 6th committee. Overnight, the former president writing, Liz Cheney should be ashamed of herself. Now she can finally disappear into the depths of political oblivion. Okay, okay. First of all, there's no way that Trump wrote that. <laughs> disappear into the depths of political oblivion? Really? This is the same guy who said, I don't like saying yesterday. It's a hard word for me. Yes, yesterday. Yes, really? Really? That's not him. You know, if I was to bet, he probably has some guy who just fancies up his words for him. <laughs> you know, he's like, I wanna say something like, Liz Cheney, go bye-bye now. <laughs> and Prince's like, okay, uh, how about disappear into the depths of political oblivion? He's like, that one is goodly, maybe the bestest, I like it. <laughs> and look, say what you want. Say what you want about Liz Cheney, but you have to respect how she stood up against Trump, even when she knew she was gonna get blown out of her seat. And yes, it is saying something about the state of the GOP that the brave stance was, don't hang the vice president, but still, she stood by it. And Liz Cheney isn't the only Republican who fell on her sword. Remember, there were only 10 Republicans in the House who voted to impeach Donald Trump. Out of those 10, four lost their primaries to a Trump challenger, and four retired so that they wouldn't lose to a Trump challenger. Because right now, any Republican who opposes Trump, he'll flush their asses away like one of those top secret documents. He doesn't play games. <laughs> but the Liz Cheney story isn't over yet because she's vowed that she will still do anything to stop Trump from becoming president again, even possibly running against him in the Republican primary. Yeah. And look, I mean, we must admit, it probably is a long shot. But don't forget, she is a Cheney. If there's one thing they're committed to, it's regime change. <laughs> and, and to be honest, if she wants to stop Trump, she doesn't have to beat him in a presidential race, you know? Just put a bunch of Reese's Pieces in a line off a cliff. <laughs> you know, and he'd be like, and this one, and this one, and this one. <laughs> but let's move on from Donald Trump to another plague America can't get rid of, the coronavirus pandemic. 
Last week, the CDC announced that, quote, COVID-19 is here to stay. Yes, which sounds less like a public health uh, announcement and more like something your mom says about your new stepdad. I love Jerry, so whether you like it or not, he's the new man of this house, okay? I love Jerry, don't eat that. That's cat food, honey. Come on. <laughs> now, because of this, and because fewer people are dying or being hospitalized uh, from the disease, uh, the, the U.S. is dropping some of the big restrictions that we've all gotten used to over the last two years, right? So uh, no more quarantining if you've been exposed to the virus. Uh, no more testing at schools. Uh, no more six feet apart social distancing. And we can go back to washing our hands just after number twos. <laughs> yeah. So basically, the new CDC guidance is just looking at what everyone was already doing and just going like, yeah, yeah, just do that. We don't care anymore. We don't care. But if the U.S. has decided to live with COVID, the situation is very different in China because they're still doing lockdowns at the drop of a hat. And it is not always going over very well. Chaos and panic at an Ikea in Shanghai, China. This is video from an Ikea store on Saturday. After it was announced, the store was going into lockdown. A customer had tested positive, so workers tried to put the entire building on quarantine. Customers rushed for the exit to try and leave before the doors closed. Those who could not get out were taken to a quarantine hotel for several days. China has the strictest COVID rules in the world. They've locked down entire cities over just a few positive cases. God damn, did you see that? Looked like a reverse Black Friday. <laughs> and I don't blame those people. Like, no, no one should have to spend one minute longer than necessary in an Ikea, okay? <laughs> Can you imagine finally finding the exit just as the doors close? You're like, no! I just wanted to buy the Schmerzglod! <laughs> And that really shows you the different approaches countries can take to the pandemic, because China has shown that you can basically prevent all COVID deaths. But every now and then, you might get locked into an Ikea for a week with no warning. <laughs> and then America's looking at that like, okay, how, how bad is death, really? I mean... <laughs> Although, honestly, if, if you have to quarantine for a week, isn't Ikea the best place to be? I mean, they've got fully done bedrooms, living rooms, Bathrooms, yeah, they say you can't poop in the toilets, but you can. <laughs> you know, I have. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about jobs. They're how we trade time for money, like witches. <laughs> Almost everyone has to work. But let's be honest, th there's working, and then there's working, <laughs> right? As more and more people are discovering. We begin with young workers refusing to go the extra mile. They're embracing a trend they're calling quiet quitting. They stay on the job, they continue to get paid, but they're only willing to do the bare minimum. So you look at these videos uh, on TikTok and YouTube of people who are celebrating their lack of enthusiasm for their job. They're just gonna mail it in. They're just gonna do exactly what they're supposed to do and not go above and beyond uh, the descriptions of the job. Some of these videos are people who are like literally turning off the phone at 5 p.m., the work phone at 5 p.m., not answering email after 5 p.m., not doing anything above and beyond the nine to five of, of the job and saying, that's good because I don't need to work for the man, you know, and not have any kind of uh, a balance in my own life. Yeah, that's right. People are quiet quitting. They're just going to their jobs and then just doing the job from, from nine to five. And then, and then, and then ho hold up, that's just working. That's work. <laughs> You realize that's work. You don't have to do the more, it's work. People in this country are so obsessed with work. Guys, your job is just the place you go to avoid seeing your family, all right? <laughs> it doesn't need to be the most important part of your existence. If your job is from nine to five, that means that the work messages should stop at five, two. Yeah, that's right. Any message you get after five is basically a booty call. <laughs> if your boss texts you, at like 7.45 to see if you filed an expense report. It should start with, hey, you up? Uh... <laughs> Bottom line, you need to establish a work-life balance. So remember, if you hate your job, make sure you also hate your life, <laughs> right? No, that doesn't work. <laughs> but, if, but if you're thinking of quiet quitting, please keep in mind that clocking out for the day at five on the dot might be okay for office work, but it's not something you can do for every job. anything drastic, okay? We're gonna work this out. We're gonna work this out together, you and me, just as long as you let the hot 
Listen, you guys, uh, you guys stay. You guys gonna stick around? All right, if you guys are back here on Monday, we'll, we'll pick it up at 9 a.m. Oh man, that's crazy. What we do? We going to the bar? We gonna do this thing? Yeah. All right, that's it for the headlines. But before we go, let's check in on the traffic with our very own Roy Wood Jr. Everybody. What up, Roy? What's going on, Roy? What's up, man? What's going on, Roy? Yeah. It's good. So good to see you. Good friends. to see you, man. So uh, good to see you, brother. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening in the traffic? We don't get the traffic, man. Traffic not going nowhere. It's traffic. That's why it's called traffic. It's always there. I want to I ask you about this Ikea situation, though. The, the, the COVID lockdown? Yeah, the people getting locked up in the store. Yeah. What, what store would you like to be locked in for two weeks? Like, what would be your COVID lockdown oh, store of choice? I would choose... I'd probably choose, like, a Best Buy or something. I can play video games the whole time. <laughs> Bro, that's dumb. You ain't got nowhere to sleep. You ain't got nothing to eat in Best Buy. There, a couple movie theater snacks. There ain't no real food. Oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. You know what I'm saying? Mercedes-Benz dealership. <laughs> that's what I'm doing my lockdown. If I want to get trapped in the spot, I want to get trapped in a Mercedes-Benz dealership. But there's no food. They got what? They got the peppermints. When you buy Mercedes, they give you peppermints. They got <laughs> plenty of peppermints. And, and at the end of the lockdown, you get a free car. Free Mercedes. No, no why, why the hell would you get a free car? That, well, after they see what I do to that car for two weeks, they ain't gonna give me that car. <laughs> Damn right, you're gonna give me the car. Cause, trust, trust, dude. If I'm locked in a Mercedes dealership, living inside a Mercedes, baby, I'm gonna be in that thing farting and shaving, I'm gonna sleep butt naked, I'm gonna be sleeping butt naked in that thing. Can't sleep, you can't let somebody sleep in a Mercedes butt naked, then resell that. You know what that do to the blue book? <laughs> I mean, all right, what, what's, what's happening in the traffic? I mean, get to the traffic. Get to the traffic. Did, did I hear you correctly in saying that American Airlines is buying 20 new jets? Yes, supersonic jets. They just put some money down on new jets. Yes. New jets. Yes, brand new. I thought the airlines, ain't they, they, they broke? <laughs> They've been crying broke for a long time. The airline industry is broke. That's what they keep telling us. I'm broke. Hey, man, I want to carry your luggage, but I need $50. Hey, I sure would love to give you some snacks, but I need $50. Oh, man. You want some leg room? Well, I'm going to need $50. We've been giving the airline industry all these 50 damn dollars, and now you just went and put down on a new jet? Bitch, no, you can't do that. You know, you know this, is like, this is like when you loan your friend $50. And then you be on the Instagram, and they be on vacation in Jamaica, and they to zip line, and they parasail, and you need to zip line me my damn fifty dollars is what your ass needs to do. You can't, you cannot cry broke. I agree. Oh, we broke. Oh, we broke. Yeah, let me get twenty of them new jets, bitch. You no, know, you can't get twenty new jets. And plus, we don't care. We just want to get there. We don't care whether or not they say what you want about Greyhound, but they understand. <laughs> that nobody cares. Greyhound ain't bought a new bus ever. <laughs> the Greyhound you ride in right now, that's the same Greyhound that Harriet Tubman was taking the slaves up north on. It's the same bus. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Roy, you're ridiculous. All right, let's, uh, let's jump into the traffic, man. <sighs> I don't do overtime. I do the bare minimum. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. That's not. Oh, All well, right. there's one. Wood Jr., everybody.